Apostle Arome Osai responded to Pastor Chris Oyakilome. I played a video for you when Pastor Chris Oyakilome was saying self-service is not a sin against God, but it's just a sin to your own body. And he was so clear that this is your own body. And this, your own body, has nothing to do with God. But here I come. Oh, here I come. But no matter how wrong it is in your mind, get this straight. In itself, it is not a sin against God. <laughs> hey, y'all, come look at this. Now, I said that for a reason. There are many Christians who think that it's a sin against God, and Satan uses it in oppressing them, oppressing their minds and making them feel ineffective and inefficient in the things of God. But once you get to understand, it's got nothing to do with God. It's all about you and your own body. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Then Satan loses his power to use it to accuse you. All right? So if you don't like it, stop it. But God's got nothing to do with it. It's your own body. Masturbation is about you and your body. And uh, God is not offended by it. After he said this, he did not sit well with Apostle Arome Osai. So Arome had to come in and correct the man of God. And I want you to listen to what Apostle Arome had to say. I was a preacher. Once upon a time, a preacher in Nigeria. He became so powerful that he was so revered among Christians in this nation. But he didn't know that he was experiencing corruption. Because if you are the one, um, can you put your Bible on your eyes? Put it on your eyes, let's see. Just very close to your eyes. No, go, go closer, go closer. Can you read it? You need to take it backward before you can read what is on the pages. That means you can see people's faults easily, but it is very difficult for you to see yours because your life is on your face. And meanwhile, people, you have a range to be able to see others. A great man that rose in our midst in this nation, mighty teacher of faith. In my own opinion, no Nigerian ever taught faith like that man. Once upon a time, I saw this same man on Facebook in a 40 minutes lecture trying to justify how masturbation is not a sin. And he was doing it with all the anointing, all the beauty that he has. I saw another edition of that teaching recently. Our preacher for this morning is saying, if we have access to living water, it takes care. Sometimes in order for you to be well, you need to purge. May the Lord, may the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. How did this great teacher of faith experience such corruption? A 40 minutes apologetics teaching to convince the body of Christ how that masturbation is self-service. You are doing it by yourself, with yourself, all alone. How does that amount to sin? What if I take an idol and I'm worshipping an idol alone? I'm not worshipping for you. I'm not trying to kill you. I'm not pursuing you. It's just me and my idol. And I kneel down before the idol. What you are not aware of, and maybe some of you that experienced masturbation before you broke free, only such people will know that it's an unclean spirit. For a preacher of that standing to come in to condescend to that state, um, we need living water. That kind of a thing is possible when we are no longer partakers of the word of righteousness. We no longer believe that there's an accountability framework that is built into our pursuit, our pilgrimage in this life. When you forget every form of accountability that is part of our reality on this journey, you can end up trying to justify masturbation in public sight. Meanwhile, what was on display that day was that corruption is not obvious in the eyes of the afflicted. But Jesus said, if you had known the gift of God and him who is addressing you now, you would have taken full advantage of this opportunity to make a request for living water. Living water, as the name implies, will do damage to anything that can corrupt, anything that can make a lie, anything that can defile, anything that can kill you. And we pray this morning. You know my prayer yesterday night. Lord, I see that you are making me a voice. Can you, can you guarantee that I will not start fighting you tomorrow? If you don't think that way, it means that you are only seen from one perspective. You are not seen from the perspective of accountability. That every ounce of grace that you squander makes you indebted to the spirit of Christ. And because of that grace that was given to you to administer, to bring purpose, profit to the kingdom of God, you may need to stand before God to account for. And the moment we forget that, we throw caution to the wind. And the agenda of the devil to corrupt us will prosper. Jesus is saying, if you have fully evaluated the importance and the privilege that I have given unto you, you will not waste it by shouting, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
you will, you will gather yourself together and you will ask me. For what? Can we ask him deliberately today? So you can rise on your feet. Let us ask him. Let us ask him for living water. It will keep you from corruption. Let us ask him for living water. It will keep you from death. It will keep you from spiritual ailments that will defile you. I would say, heads off for, for Pastor Romeo Sai. If we are to do an analysis of both, I would say Arome is in the right. I don't think men who claim to be representing God, to be Christ's ambassadors, should ever be found in a position whereby they glorify sin. Self-service, it's a sin. The roots of self-service all come from lust. Not only that, whenever you touch yourself to do anything with your holy temple, that leads you to release your sacred fluids. You have defiled the temple. You have desecrated the temple. You have unsanctified the body. And the Holy Spirit will never dwell in an unclean body. And self-service is an unclean habit that compromises your divine status. I'll remind you in case you've forgotten. I wrote a book that does not only talk about self-service. It's an e-book. It doesn't take more than two days for you to go through it. It does not only talk about self-service. It talks about even you who is married. You who has a partner, who has a relationship. You who has normalized indulgence. You who is abusing the sanctified act of engaging for pleasure. In the ebook, I highlight all the dangers, the spiritual consequences that you encounter should you continue trading on this path. Should you continue desecrating the holy temple. And I have a very strong message for the upcoming generation. So one would ask, how does this book help us women? It will help you more than it helps men. How does this book help us married couples? It will help you more than it helps those who are single. Those in relationships are very skeptical because they can't imagine themselves not engaging in these immoral activities. And by you being skeptical of hearing the truth, learning the truth, it only means you're not yet ready to be aligned with God. You're not yet ready to be aligned with the divine. And my friends, and my brothers, my sisters, my mothers, and my fathers, if you're not aligned with God, your life becomes meaningless. If you're not living a righteous life, your life becomes meaningless. If you're not holy, if you don't practice self-preservation, if you don't maintain the purity of your body, your life will become meaningless because it all means that you're disconnected from God. This ebook is my attempt to realign you with God. And there's only one way to be realigned with God is by being holy, by being righteous. And there's only one way to be righteous, to be holy. That is by preserving the purity of the holy temple so that you can invite the Holy Spirit. And there's only one way to invite the Holy Spirit and maintain the sanctity of the holy temple. That is by avoiding the release of your sacred fluids. It's not that difficult to practice celibacy. It's not that difficult to wait for the right partner to settle with. It's not. It sounds like it's a challenge, but its benefits are far much greater than those who indulge. So take a moment. I know most of you are not readers. You don't like reading. Neither do I. But this was the only way I can package this information and make it accessible to everyone so that it can leave a long-lasting impact, so that it can be burned in your spirit and in your memories, so that you can be guided, so that you can transfer this knowledge to those that you live with, to your children, Go check in the description or check in the comments. I'll put a link there. Go ahead and download the ebook in two days or even in a day. You can read it in bits and pieces, but you'll be done before you even know it. And the knowledge that you will get, the revelations that you will encounter, they are mind blowing. Your life will never be the same. So go ahead. It's the EJ trip how every release dims your spiritual light.
and hinders your financial blessings. Not only that, and hinders your ability to become who God made you to be, your destiny. Check it out and give me a review when you're done going through it.